Rebuilding a vintage open steam launch, this is part 30, piping the gas system to fire the boiler. At the moment, I'm wrestling with the superstructure to remove it. It's quite a good fit. This is not a problem because this particular part of the superstructure will not need to be removed once the boat is in steam. The only parts that do need to be removed are the bow and stern sections of the superstructure, in the bow to fit the gas tank and empty the condenser, and in the stern to fit the radio control batteries and switch on the radio equipment. This episode mainly covers the making and fitting of the gas pipe system, and the first job is to fit the piping to the emergency gas cutoff valve. And already there's a small problem. I had to lower the position of the gas cutoff valve, and now it's a little tight for a pipe to go from the gas cutoff valve to the gas tank, so I'm going to make a right angled fitting. I was going to make a suitable right angled fitting from this piece of square brass bar, but then I found this. This is a very old 90 degree elbow fitting, and all I needed to do was enlarge the existing holes by drilling them out to 5 30 seconds of an inch, and thread one side quarter by 40 threads per inch, and the other side quarter by 32 threads per inch. And then, after using copious amounts of Loctite 542 thread sealant, I'm going to fit it all together. First of all, I'm going to fit a union to one end of the 90 degree elbow. This is a quarter 40 to quarter 40 union. You may have noticed that I do quite a lot of this sort of thing. I don't mean recycling old fittings. What I mean is, as I do these steam engine renovations, I often end up with quite a lot of surplus parts. So I put these in a box, and when the box is full, I will then offer the box full of parts for sale on eBay. And currently I do have a box of bits and pieces for sale, which will be going on eBay very shortly, but not including this 90 degree elbow of course. With the threads on the valve also coated in Loctite 542, I can fully assemble the components. You will notice that the Loctite 542, which is a really good paint remover, is removing the paint from the bracket. And by the way, the reason for fitting this elbow was, Originally, the valve was slightly higher, but it was too high and I had to lower it. And that's the reason for using this 90 degree elbow, because in the lowered position, there just wasn't any room to put the pipe in place. I'm making sure that the lock nut on the valve is very tight. I'm not using my Barco spanner for this, I have to use a thinner spanner. It needs to be tight because it's going to be pushed by the servo, and I do not want the valve to rotate or move about. Really, I should have painted the servo mount in black before I fitted the valve, but I forgot to do this. Painting went out of my head because I'd been painting an upstairs bedroom, and that took a lot longer than planned and generally drove me quite mad. But I'm out of the asylum now, and I can paint this, being very careful not to get paint all over the valve. I'm going to paint the T-piece at the bottom, that'll be okay. Time now to make the piping that connects the emergency gas cutoff valve to the valve that fits to the gas canister. What I'm doing at the moment is bending some 5 30 seconds of an inch copper pipe around a piece of bar, because I need to put a loop in the piece of pipe, and here it is. This will allow for a semi-flexible coupling on the pipe and relieve some of the stress, but the real purpose of it is so that I can put my finger through the loop whilst I'm fitting the gas canister. Time now to test the gas. I open the valve on the gas canister and nothing happens. Then I open the valve on the little gas cutoff valve and you can hear that the gas is released and then shuts off. So everything's working fine here. I will be testing the gas fittings with some washing up liquid before I finally fit this part to the boat. But first of all, I need to paint the mounting. And here is the part in position as it's going to be in the boat. And you will see where the loop is positioned. It's just in the right place for me to get my finger through in order to support the pipe, which is connected to the gas valve, which in turn the gas canister screws into. After this, I silver soldered the unions onto the long pipe, and then I made this shorter pipe, which connects the gas valve to the main gas jet. And as shown in the previous episode, I used an adapter fitting because this is 5 30 seconds of an inch pipe, because it needs to fit a 5 16 by 32 union nut at the gas jet end. The gas valve thread is quarter inch by 32, so that's fine as it is. You can see the general arrangement here, and it's time now to test it. So I open the valve on the canister, and then I open the emergency gas cutoff valve and light the burner, and yes, everything seems fine. As I mentioned earlier though, once I've painted this fitting, I will test all the gas connections using some washing up liquid. This clip shows every piece of piping from the steam plant that I've recently made, tied together with some silicone rubber tubing. 
ready to be dropped in the acid bath. I made sure that the silicone rubber tubing held the pipes in position because if any of them fall off, I have to put my hand in the acid bath to retrieve them. Dangling my own body parts in the acid bath is not something I'd like to do at the weekend. When putting pieces of metal into the acid bath, it's a good idea to progress at a nice slow rate. You do not want to splash yourself with the acid. I will leave these parts in the acid overnight and the next video will show what they look like as they come out of the acid bath. I've just bought a couple of new machine tools. I'll just show you these. These are in the dirty area of the workshop near the acid bath. One is a four inch belt sander and the other one is a one inch belt sander. These are very useful tools. These are to replace a one inch belt sander and a four inch belt sander that I already had. They're not expensive tools, they're actually quite cheap and cheerful. So were the previous two, and they were bought in 1988, so they've done quite well lasting so long. I hope these two do as well. What can I say, it's painting time. And thanks for the comment that said, why didn't you video the painting of the bedroom? Well, it's not the same. In this clip I'm painting one of the radio control servo mounts. Been very careful not to get paint on the emergency gas cutoff valve. So as I can't really say much about painting, I'll talk about the Yorkshire accent that I brought up in the last video. I thank you for the suggestions, but I really cannot do this in a Yorkshire dialect. I do not have a very strong Yorkshire accent. But what I'm going to do now is talk in my normal voice. Hey up, there's trouble at mill. If you want out doing, do it this end. And stuff like that. I mean, I don't talk like that in normal life. So I'm not going to start doing it for the video. My grandfather had a really broad Yorkshire accent. Most of the time he was difficult to understand, and he used to say things like, I licked the bed till I got teared whack. Now, think about that. What does that mean? I think it means I laid in bed until I got a headache. I licked the bed till I got teared whack, is what he used to say. Anyway, one day men in white coats came and took him away, and we didn't see him for a while, but then we used to visit him on bank holidays and the occasional weekend. So picture the scene, myself and my family all sat around my grandfather in the day room at the asylum. And grandfather would chat away to us and none of us understood what he said. This went on for many years and as he got older he got more and more infirm. And one day all the family was sat round the bed and he suddenly started to get really agitated, talking really fast in this broad Yorkshire accent that none of us could understand. Then all of a sudden, he stopped talking, took his last breath, and that was the end of him. We thought, oh well, never mind. It was at this point that we noticed that my father had put his chair leg on the oxygen pipe. So that explains it. So really, there's a model in this story. If you speak in a broad Yorkshire accent, people are not going to understand what you're saying, and one or more of your visitors may accidentally put their chair leg on your oxygen pipe. So that's the painting out of the way for this episode, and both of the servo mounts are painted. Thanks for watching the video, and I hope this found it useful.